So today's video would just be a quick, uh, it's not a watching the world burn, although you're going to see some burning. <laughs> you can't help it these days. I got it. Somebody left me a, a beautiful comment and, you know, I hadn't thought about it. Uh, Ally Bank uh, said they're paying 4.5% on their savings. And I used to bank with the Ally Bank. So I know exactly what they're talking about because they're just an online bank. They're, they don't have any branch offices, so their overhead's real low. And they were able to pay really good rates and i liquidated those accounts i think when the interest rates went down to zero i just didn't see any reason to continue with them and i think something else happened and i, and I don't know why i don't remember why i closed my uh, connection with ally so that might be something you want to look at uh, to, to get a better interest rate on your savings the other thing when i was talking about 10-year treasuries I, I i didn't mention it but right now one month treasuries now I, that and that's that, well, this is not investment advice. You will lose all your money, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm actually going into the, I, it, as a result of my conversation, you know, you can't just talk about things. You got to act on it, right? Well, the trades becoming uh, Merrill Lynch, and I told you I don't like Merrill Lynch. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So I'm transferring my money from E-Trade to um, Fidelity, and I could certainly accomplish that uh, in the convenience of my office. But we got a branch office, and I thought, well, let me just go in with them, sit down and talk to someone, and, you know, I want to talk about my investments. They might have some other ideas, uh, but I'm going to buy some one-month treasuries, and they're paying upwards of 5%. Five, five in fact, I might put, maybe I'll, maybe I'll buy, a, well, I won't give you the amount, but I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to put a significant amount into a one-month uh, treasury, uh, because that's a very liquid uh, you're going to figure one month you're going to get your money back uh, and as long as you're getting that high interest rate. And that's above what Ally Bank is paying. It's over 5% right now. So that's something to consider. So for today's video, the first thing, if there's any young people that watch this video, uh, I wanted to show you what real war reporting is. Uh, if you, if your parents, you know, if, if, if all you're watching is... Uh, Twitter or TikTok or, you know, whatever. You haven't seen what a real war reporter does. And the only place you're going to get real war reporting is, I'm sorry, out of Russia. It, think about it. I have not seen, in fact, Ukraine will not even allow uh, Western reporters to go to the front lines to report on the war. You're not getting any, any reporting. I mean, all you know, you'll see, so we're at the front lines and there's nothing exploding around. <laughs> you know, they're, they're standing in the field. Everybody's overeating a meal. We're at the front line and this, this is where the war's going on. And, you know, nothing's going on. They're nowhere near the front line, you know. Uh, and so I found a really good video of, of an actual war reporter. So I want to put I want to put that I wanted to put that in perspective for young people so that they can see because they didn't see all the footage back during Vietnam when we had real reporting that took place instead of the uh, propaganda uh, prob the arm of the uh, United States government. Let's check out that video right now. With headlights off, Russia's special task force tries to sneak us past Ukrainian spotters. Alas, this time, the cover of a pitch black night was not enough. We pick up on a cluster munition heading right our way, just in time. Our crew makes the rest of the way on foot, sprinting across every open space. We are the first team of journalists to access and film these positions. From here, the enemy is no more than 400 meters away. Trenches with edges once as tall as an adult man have hopelessly crumbled. NATO weapons are scattered all around us, along with the bodies of Ukrainian troops, abandoned by fleeing comrades. 
It is an enemy weapon, a rocket launcher. All the mines that we passed and bypassed on the way here, they are all NATO made. There, there is a skeleton. The bones, a little bit higher. There it is, in the dark. Another Ukrainian cluster munition burns through the sky towards neighboring positions. A new day rolls on revealing the harrowing scale of devastation. So just a couple of words about the intensity of the fighting here and really the landscape speaks for itself. You can see the trees, or rather what's been left of them all around me. This used to be, this used to be a very thick pine forest. You wouldn't tell right now. The treetops have been shaven off by the hail of shrapnel from pretty much every round imaginable. Artillery of all calibers, tanks, pretty much every heavy weapon that you can imagine, almost, they fired at this position. This drone footage, shot a few weeks ago, provides a small glimpse into how ferociously this stronghold had been smashed for months, leaving nothing but scorched earth and blackened tree stumps. By driving Kyiv troops out of here, Russian forces have edged closer to several enemies' key logistical points right on the edge of this woodland. We approach the river, which also borders the town of Belogorovka, which is on the other side. We are advancing to cut off the enemy, so that we can target them, so that we can get close enough by road to cut off the ammunition and enemy resupply tracks. Both sides are regrouping now. Ukrainians are hastily reinforcing their new defense lines as Russia is replenishing its assault force to resume the push shortly. Amigash Danov reporting from the Donbass, RT. Now, wasn't that incredible? I wouldn't want to be that reporter. <laughs> I mean, it's, that takes real guts. Like, you know, and think about it. He's putting his life on the line. He's not up there. Well, I mean, he's fighting. He's just fighting in a different way. But he's fighting in the fact that he's bringing the news to the Russian people. And that's what the Russians are seeing. And, and that's why their press, that's why I tell everybody that their press is a lot freer than, than our press or the Ukrainian. Certainly the Ukrainian doesn't even have a press. Uh, they, they've killed all their reporters. Uh, so then the, the next thing is, you know, everybody envisions uh, Russia as this backwards nation uh, where nothing's going on. Uh, you know, if you ever, I mean, I'm sure that if you're watching my videos, you've probably seen videos of what St. Petersburg looks like in Moscow. The subways actually have actual art hanging in them. They're, they're completely clean, totally safe. Um, but I just, I, I, the reason this struck a, a nerve with me was, you know, I, I used to attend it back in the 80s, all the technical expos, and it was an exciting time in Washington, D.C., where all everybody would come in with all the latest uh, software and hardware, and it was a really cool time, you know, and, and that was a big day because it was almost like a vacation day from work, but it, it was also a work day because you're going in to look at all the latest stuff, see if you, you know, there's anything you can bring back to the whatever contract I was working on, whatever company I was working for at the time, uh, you know, pick up all the pamphlets and read about everything. Check out this expo that's going on. Uh, so this is the backwards conference that's taking place in Russia. And the other thing I want you to you notice is they, you know, they say, oh, Russia is isolated. Look how many countries <laughs> are at this expo and taking place. I'm not sure if it's St. Petersburg or I don't think they say in the video whether it's St. Petersburg or Moscow, but I think it's one or the other at a huge conference center. And I, I can list off some of the nations that were there. It was China, Iran, uh, Saudi Arabia was there. I, I don't know. I, I, other than that, I, I can't state for certain. Uh, but there were there were probably I bet a hundred nations uh, showing off all their technical wares at this conference. So Russia is completely isolated. Just remember that Russia is completely isolated. The National Forum here in Moscow has welcomed over 1,500 exhibitors from various countries. On display are uh, items that have to do with the defense uh, industry. Like I said, they're all from different countries. Most of them are from Russia, but uh, some of the la largest uh, international exhibits here are those of uh, China, India, and of course uh, Iran as well. Now, this is just uh, the first day. It's impossible to cover everything in just one day. 
but uh, items on display are anything from ammunition to clothing to high-tech security systems as well. Take a look at how our day unfolded. Doctors of uh, Medical and Biological Agency of Russia are working all over the world and saving the lives of civilians. Now they have uh, various types of uh, transport. They are responsible for all the blood banks uh, here in Russia as well. Uh, now they've been working at the special military operation. They've been working in Syria, in Latin America. And very soon they want to be situated on all of the world's uh, continents. Now this is uh, um, an armored ambulance that was used uh, in the zone of the special military operation and uh, like the doctor just uh, told me they already managed to save numerous lives. It withstands field and shrapnel damage, thereby saving the life of the driver and the passenger in the form of a patient and medical personnel. This car took part in the provision of medical care to the adult population with various degrees of wounds and injuries in the special operation zones, specifically in the Kherson region. It has proven to be an excellent, reliable machine. It can be considered universal and irreplaceable. Doctors, specialists, technicians and various uh, other experts uh, have been instrumental in reducing the number of civilian casualties at the world's uh, different hotspots, including the special military operation. Now, they have also developed this instant blood. With this, a person can be held. Transfusion can begin within three minutes of arrival at a scene. Behind me is a virtual reality parachute simulator. Now it was designed for initial training of Russian airborne troops and today we have a unique opportunity to try it out on ourselves. Will I do it? You betcha. So basically, I'm now a Russian uh, paratrooper. Как у меня получилось? Все отлично. And I'm getting an A plus from the instructor. <laughs> he says all of the uh, mistakes. Thank, thank goodness I did them right here on this uh, simulator. But it's definitely worth a try. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.